Let's start with Ravi Zacharias. And I've had people come up to me in my personal life around the Phoenix area and say, oh man, you need to start listening to Ravi Zacharias. This guy's a powerful teacher of God's word. Who's heard of this guy? Oh man, you know, you need to start listening to this guy. Okay. Well, let's look up Ravi Zacharias. First of all, I went to his website and I went to the Statement of Faith. Here's a quote from the Statement of Faith. And if you don't believe me, here's the web URL, rzim.org. That's his official website. Slash about slash vision. Direct quote. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Okay, in February of 2014, Ravi Zacharias went to Salt Lake City and was the first evangelical preacher to preach in the Mormon tabernacle in over a hundred years. The only evangelical preacher that was invited to preach in the Mormon tabernacle in over a hundred years. Here's what, he, here's what he boldly stated. And so what brings us together? As has already been said, yes, we have our theological differences, but I think it's commendable that we find a common cause in trying to create a good moral soil in this culture and in this time. Well, yeah, we have some differences, but you know what? Isn't it great how we can come together on certain things? Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'll keep reading. This is from the Deseret News. This is from the Mormon's news source. The fact that the LDS church opened its signature pulpit to Zacharias the first such invitation in more than a century has had some in both faith camps talking about the motives of Standing Together Ministries and the Richard L. Evans Chair of Religious Understanding at Brigham Young University who organized the event. And by the way, you know why it's called Brigham Young University? Because they asked uh, Joseph Smith how many more wives he wanted. He said, Brigham Young. That's pretty, you know, that's, that's where that thing got its name. But anyway... You say, that's not funny. Yeah, I know it's not funny that there are a bunch of pedophiles in the Mormon church and that they're a bunch of polygamous pedophiles. Zacharias shared the, the dais with both evangelical preachers and Latter-day Saint scholars and moved widely beyond the pulpit. Well, he's so bold, he, get, he moves away from the pulpit. You know, he doesn't just stay behind the pulpit. This guy's an animal. He, uh, he moved beyond the pulpit as he weaved biblical parallel parables with modern tales of those who encounter Christ and recognize truth, often in the context of major human heartache and suffering that no political maneuvering can solve. He spoke of the exclusivity and sufficiency of Jesus Christ, noting that he had asserted an exclusive truth claim in his declaration as the way, the truth, and the life. While he acknowledged that the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints differ in many of their views from historic Christianity, you know, just little things like they think that you're going to be a god of your own planet someday, <laughs> just little things like that there's, you know, all kinds of other gods and other life on other planets, and so, you know, just, it's not a big deal, though. But he emphasized much of what they share in reverence for a being that both consider the divine savior of mankind. Let me tell you something. The Mormons have a different being that they consider the divine savior of mankind. Look down at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and tell me if we should say, well, even though there's theological differences with the Mormons, we have a lot in common. The Bible says in verse 14, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? You know what the Bible's saying there? We don't have any fellowship with unbelievers. And fellowship means what we have in common. So we can't look to a false religion and say, hey, let's find common ground. We should just say there is no common ground. You don't believe in the Jesus Christ of the Bible. We have to separate from you. We got to come out from among them and be separate. That's right. Amen. What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And on and on. <laughs> Flip over, if you would, to 2 John, the book of 2 John toward the very end of the New Testament. Let me read for you more from the Deseret News article about Ravi Zacharias coming to, to speak. Taking the pulpit to speak of the event's historic nature, so this is the guy who introduces Dr. Zacharias, Fuller Theological Seminary President Richard Miao addressed a capacity crowd of several thousand offering a stunningly candid apology to members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and noting that friendship has not come easily between our two communities. He dubbed the event historic 
and apologize that evangelicals have often misrepresented the faith and beliefs of the Latter-day Saints. So this guy from Fuller Seminary is going and apologizing to the Mormons. Oh, we're so sorry. I'm so glad we can be friends now. It hadn't been easy, but we're finally friends. The Bible says, you adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You can't be a friend of the world and be a friend of God. If you're a friend of the world, you're the enemy of God. No, we can't have friendship between Christianity and a cult. A cult. Call it what it is. It's a cult. It always has been a cult. It always will be a cult. I don't care how you try to, 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 to dress up the Mormons or the Seventh-day Adventists or the Jehovah's False Witnesses. They're cults. They all started in the 1800s. They all came out of the same movement, and they're all cults. But listen to this. He says this. Let me state it clearly. We evangelicals have sinned against you. He added. He added that both camps have tended to marginalize and simplify the other's beliefs. Historical animosity dating back to the founding of the LDS Church by Joseph Smith in the 1830 has heightened in recent years between the two groups, particularly in the 1990s when several high-profile evangelical leaders asserted that Mormons are not Christians. Look, that is still where I stand and where every Bible-believing Christian that I've ever talked to stands. The only people I've ever had say to me, Mormons are Christians too, were unsaved. They did not believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, at the end of his sermon, he goes and speaks this watered-down, talking about what they agree on sermon at the Mormon Tabernacle. At the end of his sermon, he says, thank you and God bless you. And then there's a huge round of applause where all the Mormons break out in applause. Why? Because he didn't get up and, and rip face. See, look, if the Mormon Tabernacle said, Pastor Ashley, we want you to come speak, I'd say, sure. And I'd get up and say, hey, Joseph Smith's a pedophile. Hey, you know, you're worshiping other gods and other planets. But it would never happen. You say, well, you know, but the Apostle Paul, he tried to, you know, appeal to people on their love. Yeah, when he was on Mars Hill with the pagans, here's what he said. He said, you're too superstitious. Yeah. Yeah. You are ignorant, he said. I'm going to show you the real God. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's what's missing here. Okay, the, the actual rebuke where he says, well, the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Translation, stop being a pagan. Stop worshiping idols. Stop being a Mormon. Hey, you're all going to go to hell if you don't leave this cult. Is that what he said? No, he said, God bless you. Look at 2 John verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Now let me tell you something. When you're teaching that Jesus Christ is not the same as God the Father, in the sense that they're both one God in three, three in one, it says in 1 John 5, 7. If you're going to sit there and say that there are actually a multiplicity of gods, and Jesus is one of them, and the Father, which they call Elohim, transliterated from the Hebrew. If you're going to sit there and say, well, there's Elohim and then there's Jesus, they're, they're two totally separate, and then there's all these other gods too, millions and billions of gods, you've transgressed. You're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ at that point anymore. When you're teaching that salvation is by works, as the Mormons teach, you're not in the doctrine of Christ anymore. He says, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. That's why you should never allow the Mormons into your home. When they come to your door and they're not bringing the true doctrine of Christ, you do not invite them into your home and you do not bid them Godspeed. And you know what Godspeed means? God bless you. And he gets up and he said, God bless you, thank you. Gets a big round of applause because you're always going to have the world applaud you when you do that which is wrong. So he gets up and says, God bless you. What is the consequence of Ravi Zacharias standing before a body of Mormons and saying, God bless you? The, the, the result of that is that now he is responsible for the evils of the Mormon church. He is responsible for all the lies that they tell. 
he is held responsible. God just took the sins of Mormonism and he just put it on Ravi Zacharias' account and said, you will pay for these. Look, Ravi Zacharias does not believe in the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Ravi Zacharias, the false teacher, so he was already going to hell before he even set foot in the Mormon tabernacle, but you know what? His hell, his punishment in hell just got a little worse. It just got a little hotter because he just picked up all the sins of, of Joseph Smith now by blessing it. Because the Bible says, he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Zacharias also spoke favorably of Roman Catholic mystic Henry Nguyen, calling him one of the greatest saints in recent memory. Zacharias also called Joyce Meyer a great Bible teacher. He went on her show and said, oh, you're such a great Bible teacher. You can watch the video of him saying it. 